at this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Subhana Gandhi to come to the stage. She's the current uh, uh, TIPS president, and she's going to open the conference. Please welcome Dr. Subhana Gandhi. Good morning, everyone. Are you all awake? Did you get your chai? Today I am very thrilled and excited and honored to welcome you all for this very, very important symposium, Wellness and Lifestyle Symposium. Today we are here not only as a healthcare professional, but as an individual who value and understand the importance of prioritizing our own health and well-being. In 2023, Journal of American Medical Association has published an article from a large study that was done at a, a big academic institution. They interviewed over like six, 700 healthcare professionals and majority of them are doctors. 32% of those physicians said they are not happy about their lifestyle and they, are, they don't have the professional satisfaction and they were looking at alternative ways of employment, which is it's, it's a very sad situation because we spent years and years of our life training to be doctors. And if you look at the statistics, healthcare professionals are at twice the risk for mental health problems. So, in the demanding and often high stressful environment of practicing medicine, the vital importance of like, uh, it's very easy to neglect our own well-being because we are busy in the pursuit of taking care of others, we tend to neglect ourselves. So let me tell you my story. I'm an endocrinologist, been in private practice since 2007. As a fresh graduate from University of Buffalo, when I started my practice, I thought of like, you know, a little delusional myself, thought I can cure the world, okay? And when I started the practice in 2007, CDC, we released the data about diabetes outcomes. And at that time, 48% of the diabetic have an A1C goal of less than 7%. And I told myself that I will do better than this. And my patients are not going to be the national average. Because at that time, we had 13 medications to treat diabetes and about six classes of medication. So now we are in 2024. In the past 17 years, I have been involved in multiple clinical trials, little over 70 clinical trials to be precise. And I've been involved in, as a principal investigator for multiple groundbreaking medications, including semaglutide and tergipatide. Right now, as I stand in front of you, I have 50 medications to choose from, and about 13 classes of drugs, if you include the bromocriptine ER as one of the tasks. But, do we expect a different outcomes than what I have seen in 2007? No, because our members tell a different story. In 2013, as per the CDC data, only 49% of my diabetics have an A1C less than 7%. So what is the missing piece? More than a decade ago, when I had very few medications to choose from, not many medications that had shown to improve the cardiovascular outcomes and mortality. Two, now we have groundbreaking medications that have, that have shown improvement in the cardiovascular outcomes and mortality. Why the, the clinical trial knowledge has not been translating into clinical medicine? Why are we still at less than 50% in terms of the glycemic control? What is the missing piece here? Then I realized the missing piece is the changes in the lifestyle. In the hustle and bustle of practicing medicine, we tend to forget that, you know, it is uh, important to take time, not only for ourselves, but also our patients. So it's easy for us to go through the prescriptions and prescribe the medication, then sit down and have a meaningful conversation with our patients to talk about nutrition, wellness, breathing, and lifestyle changes. In the past 15 years, I had more than 48 patients I've been following who had more than five procedures to lose weight. They had gastric um, lab banding, gastric bypass, reversal of gastric bypass, 
gastric sleeve, and another different Hipple's kind of procedure. But if you look at their weight now, compared to 2007, either they weigh the same or they weigh a little bit more, but they are sicker. So there is definitely the missing piece. So what I request you guys today is, as we gather in this room to learn more about our wellness and lifestyle changes and a CME dedicated to that, let's challenge ourselves to shift this paradigm. Let's recognize that the true power of healing is not just in the prescription pharmacotherapy. Don't get me wrong, pharmacotherapy is very essential. And I get very excited when I ever I hear about a new molecule. Or like, you know, I would say, this is it. This is going to cure diabetes. But it hasn't been happening. So today, I would be, uh, the program is designed in a way that we talk about each organ system and the lifestyle changes and the things that we can change to not only prevent the disease, but also manage the chronic conditions. So I would like to request each one of you to identify one or two things that resonate with you from each speaker and try to implement ourselves. When we are feeling better and when we take care of ourselves, we can be a better uh, providers and also the role models for our patients. So my goal, my goal is to see how many of us can rise up to the challenge. So with that, with that, I want to say one last thing. Like, you know, we want to practice what we preach. And also, let's lead by the example. Okay? With that, I would like to thank all of you for coming here tonight, uh, this morning. And also, would like to thank all of our sponsors who made this event possible. Please, during breaks and at lunchtime, stop by at our sponsors and say hi. And even though I believe pancreas is the most intelligent organ in the body, and it's not that popular, I have to start the conference with a cardiology talk. So let's invite Dr. Vinny Bhavna back onto the stage to introduce the first speaker. Thank you all.